Hello, everyone, and welcome to another webinar from the Wealth Building CPA. I'm your host, Yasmin Razak, and it's my pleasure today to chat to our client of the month, Frank Asher. Frank is a semi retired landscape gardener who used to own a landscape gardening company and an urban retail nursery in Washington, D.C. Frank is one of Eberi's oldest clients who has been through the ups and downs of owning and selling a successful business. He now focuses his energy on living as a landscape artist, a writer, and a small-time real estate investor. Thanks for joining us today, Frank. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay, before we get to our interview, here is a little bit about Ebere Okoye and her services for those of you who are looking to focus on wealth building. Ebere is a CPA, an active real estate investor, and the founder of the Wealth Building CPA. She owns real estate investments in five states across the Eastern coast. Her company has helped over 5,000 people like you prepare their taxes online and offline. Her greatest joy comes from helping clients, friends, and associates become free of financial stress. So let Ebera and her team make your financial life a little bit more profitable and book a free consultation at the number on the screen. Okay, welcome to today's guest, Frank Asher. Thank you again for joining us. And uh, just before we started recording, you were telling me about how you decided to move into the next phase of your life after running a successful landscaping business. So could you tell us a little bit about how you got into landscaping? Well, uh, I started guerrilla gardening in Washington, D.C., uh, right around the late 90s, early 2000. Um, it was my therapy, my bliss. So I started working with tree boxes around DuPont Circle in D.C., and I would clean up the weeds, clear out the dog doo-doo, and maybe plant a few things in these tree boxes. And people would notice them and that they'd comment and give me compliments on them. And they'd ask for a business card and I didn't have one. And that just kept happening. And so finally I thought, well, maybe I better get a card. So I created a card and the name of my business was Fairies Crossing, F-A-I-R-I-E-S apostrophe. So it was the crossing owned by the fairies <laughs> and um the my gardens i just would always imagine that my gardens would be the portal if you will for fairies to come from their world into our world and then to enter back so i always loved creating green sp spaces in the urban area that had been a previously abandoned and forgotten then i would just come in and, and bring life to it um, after maybe a few years of doing that, somebody asked if I wanted to open up a green space and I jumped at the chance. It was a vacant lot next to my house and um, it was an old uh, gas station. So we turned that into an urban nursery where I sold plants and it was a community space as well. We had events and we had classes and workshops for people to learn how to plant and even had beekeeping and then that lost that lease and I ended up creating a space in front of an abandoned school on Rhode Island Avenue in the Shaw neighborhood and that was Old City Farm and Guild and we would have major events and concerts there and um, a farmer's market and it just was um, a really kind of the center of the neighborhood for green things. So um, and then in 2017 I had been doing both businesses for about 10 years and I was starting to get a little tired. I'm 66 now. So um, I worked with a uh, coach and to sell both of these businesses in a good way. And a man who owned a, uh, arb who was an arborist and owned a company cleaning out trees and things, bought both businesses and now has continued the both businesses over in another part of DC. So, um, my and he still has my clients and and um so it's continuing on even though i may have moved to cumberland oh wow that's a great story it sounds like you were ahead of your time it's very fashionable now to have green spaces in urban areas but you were already creating those oasis 
um, many years ago and yeah. trying to beautify DC, <laughs> which yeah. I'm sure was a challenge at the time. Yes, um, it would be a challenge today too. I man. know, I know. <laughs> Every time I drive into DC, I get lost. I'm like, I don't recognize anywhere anymore. Oh, but, oh. Um, so thank you for, for bringing a bit of nature and beauty to people. I'm sure it was greatly mm. appreciated. Thank so you. what were some of the, the uh, one or two of the business challenges you faced and how did you overcome them? Um, I would say as the business started to grow and the clients, more and more clients started to come in, I had to seek out employees and I had to learn how to manage employees and I had to learn how to manage schedules and manage um, people. You know, I, I've been really good on my own doing just plants, managing little areas of green space, but all of a sudden people were in the picture. There was that. Um, when I bought the retail business, you know, there, there were more taxes that I had to, sales taxes that I had to take care of and employment taxes and, and you know, typical business, self-employed businesses um, deal with these things all the time. And so it was with the help of Hubert that I was able to start keeping track. She brought in an accountant to come uh, or a, a, a more of an administrator, account administrator to come into my house uh, once every other week to download all the information in the cells and, the, and keep track of things so that Iber could get a quarterly report, profit loss statement every quarter. And so, you know, so we were on top of it going forward. Um, that was a big help with, with Iber. I think one, another Another thing was um, the city really had a hard time when I had these two nurseries uh, finding abandoned places and wanting to bring life and a business into them, getting the, 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 the right um, approval from um, the people at um, the DC uh, organization that deals with permits and all that, getting permits and approval to run a business and to get a, uh, in, when I was in front of the school, I had to get approval from DC schools. And they just could not wrap the idea around their head that I could take an abandoned place and turn it into a green space that was alive with not only plants, but with people. <laughs> but uh, it, it worked out quite well. Okay, well, that sounds great. I mean, you already answered my next question, which was <laughs> how did you, um, how did the Wealth Building CPA, um, and in particular, Barry, help you along yeah. the journey? And it sounds like she was really hands on with how she was getting the uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, for a while there, I was trying to do all the bookkeeping myself, and of course, I got overloaded. And so I, I free, had a bookkeeper coming in, freelanced for about a year and a half. And then I, you know, I still tried to struggle with that. And we were just kept getting bigger and bigger as, as it went on. And so when Iber offered somebody to come in, um, he was really great. And he really kind of kept things in, in line. And so I didn't have that worry as a business owner. I knew that all that those numbers were getting relayed to Iber every quarter. Oh, well, that's great. Because, of course, you know, you wanted to be busy with the plants and the growing. Yeah. So that's that was a huge yeah. help. And so why would you yeah. um, recommend a bear in her services to other business owners who are perhaps struggling to with handling things like taxes and, and bookkeeping? Well, for me personally, it started as a personal connection. I mean, Iber and I both met at the beginning of our businesses. And I remember... Uh, the first year, I think it was the first year that I came and I met Bear at her house and she was doing her bookkeeping out of her house and she had one baby and I think she had, she was carrying her second child. So it was a, it was, you know, a real uh, personal connection that we had and she was very helpful with that and she's continued to be personally connected to me, you know, 22 years later. Wow, that's incredible, incredible yeah. business relationship that you have there and very rare as well. So yeah. thank you for that testimonial. So mm -hmm. you decide after many years to um, to sell the business and to move into the next phase of your life. Mm -hmm. And I know that you, you know, you physically moved where you live and mm -hmm. you decided to invest in real estate as well. Can you tell us why a real estate investment was important as part of your retirement portfolio? 
Well, I was sort of forced into it, really. The um, not forced, but um, encouraged, highly encouraged to go this way because um, I had also sold my house, and so I had um, a large chunk of money coming in from the house, and I needed to find a way. I think it's a ten thirty four um, form where the money goes into an account, kind of an escrow account, until property is found, and then that money that that I made as a profit from my house could go into this particular new property, and then I would save on taxes. So I bought a duplex. And I, you know, I knowing that I didn't know what I was going to do next, I felt I needed to have some kind of, of revenue coming in still. So um, it was great to have this duplex with two apartments bringing in rent and bringing in revenue for me. That's good. Very being very strategic, which is important because um, yeah. a lot of people tend to be impulsive when they see what they think is a good deal and regret it later. So I'm glad mm -hmm. that you took good advice and did your research. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so now that you're in the semi-retirement um, phase of your life, how are you enjoying it? I would say um, on the on the like eight times out of 10, you know, eight out of 10, I am thrilled. I am grateful. Um, I have my own garden that I get to tend to. I do some volunteer work for a nonprofit here in Cumberland, Maryland. I I'm in charge of their garden. And then I have about six clients that I putz around in their gardens, you know, every other week or so. So I'm busy and I, I'm active and um, I was able to buy a home that had 1,500 square feet vacant property right next to it that came along with the house and it was flat land and of course now it's much more than that. I've really had a chance to turn it into my own oasis. Um, you know, it's, you know, I think those, there are things that as we get older, we learn to let go and let the younger people come up and, and um live their life and and do things that they want to do and follow their bliss and so it's that adjustment period that i'm in and, and learning to give back and um so here i am at 65 soon to be 66 you know i have no complaints <laughs> I'm, I'm very fortunate i'm very fortunate and grateful yes. That's a wonderful attitude to have. And finally, before we wrap this up, Frank, any parting words of wisdom or advice for people listening who, whether it could be life or business advice? Follow your bliss. <laughs> oh, that's listen, great. <laughs> listen to your heart. Follow your heart. Your heart knows. Yes. And, uh, if definitely. you have someone like Bear on your side, um, that's even, even, uh, even better. <laughs> well that's great advice follow your bliss i'm going to try and do that thank you so much for sharing your story with us today frank and we wish you continued success thank you so much i appreciate being here thanks